Nutritionists say that the natural way we humans can extend our lifespan is by living on no more than 1,500 calories a day, taking regular vitamin injections, and ridding our bodies of toxins. Well, screw that, because that ain't living in my book. So, for those of us who love pumping ourselves full of booze, preservatives, and aerosol cheese, what can we do to achieve eternal life? Let's find out, shall we? In our list of seven technologies trying to make us immortal. Starting at number seven, gene manipulation. At Strange Mysteries, we've covered the field of gene manipulation many times, so you may already know about the CRISPR-Cas9 editing tool. If not, here's a quick recap. It's a fancy pants science kajugger that can edit your DNA as quickly and easily as you can edit those holiday photos to make you look less fat. CRISPR has the potential to cure devastating genetic diseases and create so-called designer babies which are immune from many of the common causes of death we endure today. That could mean bye-bye cancer, bye-bye HIV, and bye-bye ginger kids. But surely, we'll still die from aging even if these deadly diseases don't get us first? Well, not necessarily. CRISPR could be used to manipulate the telomeres within our DNA which dictate how long we live for. Or make germline modifications to human cells, making them multiply, and essentially allowing them to live indefinitely. And exactly how do we find out which genes to tinker with to unlock immortality? We investigate people like 8-year-old Gabby Williams, who, despite her age, weighs only 11 pounds and retains the facial features and skin of a newborn. Gabby has a mysterious condition shared by only a few others in the world which slows her rate of aging, and we have no idea how long she might live for. Potentially, Gabby Williams could develop normally, just over a much longer period of time. Maybe even centuries. Because somewhere in Gabby's DNA is a genetic aging off switch which has been triggered. And if we can find out where it is, we could be able to flip that switch in every single one of us. At 6. Cryonics until our recent developments in gene editing and microrobotics, cryogenically freezing people was deemed the most likely way for humans to live for extended periods of time. This process involves chilling the human body to a temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius, with the hope that eventually we'll figure out how to cure whatever disease you had, and also somehow revive you from the more troublesome condition of being a frozen human popsicle. Cryonic freezing can only be performed after someone has legally died and typically takes place in the moments after cardiac arrest because its proponents believe this will help retain your memories and personality. The theory behind cryonics is that the brain doesn't have to be active in order to store information or memory. So rather than hoping for a full body revival, most who engage in the practice believe that one day, technological advancements will enable their mind to be restored elsewhere. Despite doubts about whether the brain is capable of restoring memory post-cryonic freezing, there are more than 400 people in the United States alone who are currently preserved in this way, with several thousand more having paid and made arrangements for cryonic preservation after their death. But let's put this idea on ice for a second, because there may be a better way to preserve humans than popping them in a freezer. At 5. Chemical Stasis as with cryonics, the methods involved in chemical-based suspended animation are intended to preserve a human body for a set period of time rather than extend their lifespan. But unlike with cryonics, experiments in this field have actually had some success. At the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle, they successfully managed to place mice into a form of induced hibernation. Mice do not naturally hibernate themselves. But by submerging the rodents in a hydrogen sulfide chamber for six hours, they were able to reduce core body temperatures, decrease metabolic rate tenfold, and successfully revive the mice once the experiment was over. This test was repeated by Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, and if developed further, the process could be used to sedate astronauts sent on long-range missions. But sadly, Experiments on larger animals such as sheep and pigs have been 
How can I put this? Bacon flavor snow cone, anyone? 4. Nanotechnology Nanotechnology is still in its infancy, and we're clearly some way off from having swarms of microscopic robots tend to our every need. But when this technology does come to pass, it could be that this is the development which finally unlocks human immortality, keeping us safe from aging, illness, and even accidental forms of death. Scientist, futurist, and Google Director of Engineering Ray Kurzweil believes we could have this technology in as little as 30 or 40 years. And if that's true, any of us still around by then may be able to live forever. If the human body can be repaired and edited down at a molecular level, then there's literally nothing short of a cataclysmic explosion which could kill you. That or the nanobot swarm's batteries run out. Deep cut to an artery? Nanobots can stitch that right up. Tumor on the lung? They'll swipe that sucker right out of there. Bullet wound to the brain? Who knows? Maybe they'll be able to repair your gray matter, and you'll continue to function as normal. But this last situation requires us to further understand human consciousness. And once we do, we could have yet another means of achieving human immortality. At number 3. Mind Uploading If we come to understand how human consciousness works, and we know its limitations and requirements, could we upload and download our minds into new bodies or machines as easily as I'm downloading new episodes of South Park right this minute? This process is called whole brain emulation, and it's been a mainstay of science fiction stories for decades. But just how close are we to achieving this goal? First off, we've got to understand the human brain a lot more, and that's no easy feat. Right now, billions of dollars are being spent on projects aimed at doing exactly that, with the Brain Initiative and the Human Brain Project two notable examples. But even if the human brain's complexity were understood today, it's difficult to get your head around just how much computational power we'd need to mimic or store a fully functioning human mind. Considering how many neurons there are in the human brain, to even simulate it would require a CPU of 10 to the power of 43 flops and a drive capable of storing 10 to the power of 14 terabytes of information. And based on Moore's law, we don't expect this to be possible until at least the 22nd century. Then there's also the question of moving a human mind versus copying it directly. How could we even know if we'd actually transferred someone's consciousness or merely duplicated it? And furthermore, how would the newly copied person themselves even know? If it were a fully functioning, fully aware life form. Ray Kurzweil, who we mentioned before, believes brain uploads will be possible by 2045. But maybe there's a simpler method of transporting human minds staring us directly in the face? Or should that be someone else's face? In a two, head transplants. Italian neurosurgeon Sergio Canavero has been in the news a lot lately, as he claims he's about to perform the world's first ever human head transplant operation. His patient is a 31-year-old Valerie Spiridonov, who suffers from a debilitating muscle-wasting disease which makes him severely disabled. And the operation is scheduled to go ahead sometime in late 2017, legal clearance permitting. Spiridonov is even selling head transplant merchandise in order to help fund the procedure. But what's the likelihood of a successful transplant? Head transplants have been performed on human cadavers and live animals before. And although dogs and monkeys, who have undergone the procedure, did survive initially, they were left paralyzed by the operation and died shortly after. The main problem seems to be in reattaching the spinal cord once it's been severed. But by using an ultra-sharp blade in conjunction with Fusogen technology, something proven to have worked on rats, Dr. Canavero believes his methods will prove successful. And if not, perhaps we'll just scale the operation down slightly. Bringing us to number one, brain transplants. Rather than transplanting a whole human head, might it be possible to instead move the human brain to a new body or vessel, thus eliminating the need to analyze and understand the mind on anything but a physical level? 
Dmitry Itzkov certainly thinks so, as the Russian internet millionaire is currently funding a project known as the 2045 Initiative. This organization has proposed a four-step timeline to achieving immortality, with their first target being the creation of a robotic human body by 2020. Then, over the next five years, they hope to transplant a human brain into a robotic vessel, followed by the creation of an artificial working mind by 2035, and the development of a conscious, hologram-like human avatar by 2045. But why? I mean, if I'm alive, but I can't touch people, stuff, and people some more, is there even a point? An alternate method of brain transplant would involve moving the human brain itself into another person, rather than swapping the whole head over. But so far, we've only succeeded in partial brain transplants involving mice, with rejection still posing a major problem. And that's our list. So who knows what the future holds? Maybe we'll develop these technologies, maybe we'll never even get close. Or maybe the tools we need to achieve immortality are already available. After all, human technology is developing to the point where we'll soon be able to replace our defective limbs, our damaged eyes, and my heavily swelled and scarred liver with robotic equivalents. So rather than transplanting or genetically editing our weak little bags of flesh and guts, instead, perhaps the future of immortality lies in modifying humans gradually into indestructible robot killing machines. Did I say killing machines? <laughs> I meant happy machines. Super happy, friendly, hugging machines. Shut up, human. Go watch, watch another video like this one on the seven mysteries of existence.